Hey friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Heffy Doodle video. Today I'm going to be using this fluffy puffy unicorn stamp set. We're going to pair that up with the stitched slimline trio dies along with the slimline pull tab dies. We are going to make an interactive pull tab card. And I'm showing you which die I use in particular. Uh, this on the pull tab dies, I used a lot of them. So you're going to see mostly the cutouts. I don't show you all the die cutting. We're also going to be using the Cloudy Sky stencil along with some alcohol marker friendly cardstock. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and cut out using some white cardstock uh, and the Stitch Slimline Trio dies. And now I'm going to take that cloud die and I'm going to, and I'm going to use the same cloud, the same line for my clouds all the way down this card. So I'm going to tape this in place so it doesn't really move. I'm just using a little bit of washi tape and then I'm going to use a mini ergo blending brush along with some minty fresh ink. This is just a very light green ink. My theme here is green. <laughs> I figure it is February. We're getting close to thinking about maybe St. Patrick's cards and no, maybe this isn't St. Patrick's themed, but I figured my little fluffy puffy unicorns could be on a green themed card and I'll even color them with some greens. So it should be fun. So all I'm doing is I am moving this piece of cardstock, I'm moving it up and I'm moving it over for each time that I want to do some sponging. It's, it's not really like perfect as far as um, the spacing goes, but all I'm doing is just moving it back and forth just along this same cloud line. You could absolutely use all the different cloud lines if you wanted, they're all fantastic. But I'm just going to go, like I said, back and forth. So we'll go all the way over to the left hand side for this next cloud and sponge on our color. And I love this minty color because it is such a light color. It's very forgiving when you're doing blending. Sometimes when we do darker colors, it cannot be maybe quite as forgiving, but uh, this was, yeah, pretty flawless. And then we'll move to the middle again, and then we'll move to the far right. And then we're getting towards the bottom, but this is just such an easy way to add clouds and the minty fresh just makes it that much easy too. All right, we're gonna do one more. So I'm gonna end up pulling this all the way to the left again, just making sure that I get that cloud on there and then tape it down again and then sponge one more time. But then I'm gonna pull this out and I don't want it to be stark white at the bottom. So I am gonna do a little bit of blending on the very bottom just to kind of blend those colors a little bit. And then next will be splatter. So I'm gonna pull in some Arteza metallic watercolors, just putting a drop of water in some green. I'll splatter that all over that background because I just love splatter. I am on a serious splatter kick right now. I did some green. Now I'm going to do some yellow, which for some reason I was thinking that was going to be more gold. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's not exactly what I was going for. So I do put some water in the gold that's of course right next to the yellow and splatter that all over that background too. And I'll show you what this ends up looking like with all that beautiful metallic splatter on the background. But I don't know what it is. Splatter just, hmm, I don't, it just brings it together for me. You could skip this step, but take a look at that. Some nice shimmery splattery background goodness. All right, next we need to do our stamping. So I have that alcohol marker friendly cardstock from Heffy Doodle in there. And I'm gonna ink up my images with some blackout ink by Ink on 3 stamp that down and then now we'll do our coloring. I started off with some C0 and because it's, you know, it's wet on the paper right now, it actually looks fairly dark, but you will notice over time that is really going to dry back. And for whatever reason, I was really struggling with getting that dark enough. I didn't want those unicorns to be completely white. So I'll bring in some R83 for their cheeks and ears. And then I'll come in with some R81 to blend that out just a little bit on both cheeks. And then here I'm looking at that going, okay, that's just about gone, but we'll, we'll see. So I come in with some Y26 for the horn. And then our first green color for the hair is G00. Then we're going to come in with some G02 to blend that out a little, add a little bit of depth to that strand of hair. I forget the tail, but I do come back and, and color that later. Then we're coming in with G03. That's our next color. And then we'll do some G09 to add some depth to the hair there. And I just think it's cute. I mean, obviously it's not like a St. Patrick's per se, but with the green, you kind of get the idea heading into March. 
and I'm just blending it th out those colors with that G03 and then we'll come in and do the tail with the G00 and the G02. So here I am looking at that knowing that I need to um, darken that up just a little bit, add that C1 to the clouds, not quite dark enough so I add C3 to the clouds and now we'll bring in our matching dies. And then I'll just tack that down and we're going to run this through our Heffy Doodle mini die cutting machine and I did forget to zoom out but or zoom back in or zoom out. So we're going to use some of those dies that are in the pull tab die set. This one is going to give you the channel for your thumb part where you would pull and then I've tacked down the very skin the longest very skinny piece that will actually be the channel for where our unicorn is going to go up and down. That pale green piece you see that I've already folded along those score lines and this is going to go right into the back and those little pieces will pop open and that's what we're eventually going to attach our unicorn to so that our unicorn can slide up and down. I did keep that little skinny piece and you'll see why although it's probably unnecessary. I have grabbed out the darker green so I forgot to mention those colors. That darker green is called green bean and the lighter green is hint of mint. So these are Heffy Doodle cardstock colors. I did glue back in our channel just so it's not so dark green in the back even though it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to put this right back into our channel. I, there's this piece here. This is part of the pull tab die. You're going to need this to attach so that your your mechanism doesn't slide to the left and right. Use a strong adhesive. I'm using liquid glue. You just have to make sure that you hold it in place for a few seconds. And then you're going to wrap that around fairly loosely. You don't want it to be too tight otherwise your, your mechanism won't move. And then just hold that in place for a minute. But that's what's going to hold your mechanism in place so that it will stay in track if that makes any sense. You'll have some left over and it depends on which channel you use and how far down you put it. I'm just going to trim off all that excess and then here's this piece that has a cutout of an arrow. This will help your recipient to realize that it's actually interactive and it'll show them how that they pull it up. And I use that with the green bean cardstock as well. And it'll also give it, when you put that on top of your cardstock, it'll make it a little bit heavier so that it'll be a little bit sturdier. Alright, now I want to grab out some foam tape. I'm using some of the Heffy Doodle foam tape. This is the 5 millimeter, 12 millimeter, but they're all 5 millimeter. So it's a little bit thicker than your normal foam tape. This is perfect for shaker cards, just absolutely perfect. And it's really great for uh, sliders as well because it makes sure that you have plenty of room, um, you know, from the front and back. You wouldn't want to just attach this down with glue because then you're just not going to have a lot of space in there. There's also some three millimeters so I'm going to use some of this because that'll be perfect in between the big one, the big foam tape, and then my mechanism. And so that's going to be great. And of course I have to check it out and make sure that my slider is working fine, making sure that I didn't put any of that foam tape in the way of it. I'll peel off all of that release paper and then I am going to pull the mechanism up so that I can see exactly where I'm putting that over the top of the little piece that I had attached to our green bean panel. So just sticking that down right over the top. And then this is going to slide up and down pretty nicely. It'll actually slide down up and down even easier once we attach our unicorn. You could put foam tape on here, but since there's already plenty of foam tape in the back, I didn't want this to be too bulky, so I'm just going to glue it right down. And then our sentiment. I pulled out one of the sentiments from the fluff, fluffy puffy unicorns, used my magic powder bag over some black cardstock, inked this up with some juicy embossing ink, and now I'm going to cover that with some gold embossing powder. Then I'll heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And then when we are done with that, I'm going to trim it down so that it will fit perfectly on the front of our slimline card. So it'll go from edge to edge. I'll glue that in place right underneath our little unicorn. And yeah, so now we have our card base, which is some more of that hint of mint cardstock. I've cut this down to seven inches by eight and a half inches, and I'm scoring it at three and a half inches. And then I do need to do a little something something to the inside. So I have our little sitting unicorn and a couple of the clouds. I'm going to glue those right down to the inside of that. And then I'll glue our little unicorn sitting on top of the clouds. 
And then I have a couple more sentiments picked out from the fluffy puffy unicorns. <laughs> I just love saying that. And I love how uplifting these sentiments are. Believe in yourself. Sparkle everywhere you go. And I believe this last one says you are one of a kind. And I love that. It's a great little group of sentiments. Now we're ready to attach down our card panel to our card base. So I'll use some more liquid glue. And then there'll be a nice little border of that hint of mint. And then our green bean. But I can't stop there. I do want to embellish a little bit. So I've pulled out some flat backed sequins. I'll have those linked down below. And I'm just going to put those into place using a crystal katana and some liquid glue. And as you can see, I was quite liberal with all the sparkly bling. <laughs> and then once those are attached, that's going to finish off our card for today. So I'd love to know what you think. Have you tried interactive cards? Is it something that's on your list that you want to try? This one is super, super easy. So leave that in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.